Kamari. Papa. Kente Yari. Papa Kente Wayo. Yeah. Akwele Kamari. Yo, Papa. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful how children can learn quick. You know, he just spoke Evi, my native language. Uh, he learned it, you know, right away um, in the corner over there. <laughs> uh, in this country, uh, people don't uh, learn foreign language. I know, but children uh, are able. My name is Adote Akwe. I'm from Togo, West Africa. I could have been a Ghanaian because uh, in Africa, when the countries were cut off in Berlin in those days, they, don't take, they didn't take into account some ethnical groups one of them I belong to, AV group. I'm happy to be here. But frankly, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, autumn leaf, you know, 49 leaves, and they put autumn. We don't have autumn in Africa. <laughs> So I, I'm lost, <laughs> right? And I say, Peter, where are you coming from with this autumn thing? Okay, I try to adjust. And then, oh my God. Back in Africa, we have only two seasons, rainy season and dry season. So am I a dry leaf? or a rainy season leaf. Okay, I, I, I just. Okay, what make it easy for me, Third, 30th of September, I became American. <laughs> so, so now, give me some time, I will adjust. I will become an autumn leaf. What gives meaning to my life is my relationship with God. I don't know how people do it, but I couldn't have existed without that relationship. And it's easy for me to go to my father through Jesus Christ. I don't have, you know, problem following someone who tells me I am the light of the world. Wow. And, and believe you me, I'm going to be a light in America. Yes. I just want to know how I can really become that light, incandescent, you know, to be in front of people, leading people. I'm praying that God make me shine. Because back home, I was a union activist, uh, very strong. I don't give credit to myself. I fought hard, leading people. I'm not afraid. Hey, I want justice and freedom. And I was leading that union, and I faced death. That's why when I say God, I know what I mean. Uh, most people take life for granted. In 2005, I came to this country, and uh, it was God. I fled death under a strong di dictatorship. And the other thing that gave me meaning to my life is thinking. You know, uh, one French philosopher say. I think, uh, therefore I am. Je pense, donc je suis, en français. Ne me tamo bouma, en anabo manyana bo malagba. 
That's the same thing I'm saying in AV. So, Peter wants me to be natural. I don't know how to be natural in my third language. <laughs> Peter, uh, you have a job to do. Huh? Teach me how to be natural in English. English is my third language. I want to be natural in AV. In my turf, I can be natural. Now, well, you tell me that I'm now American. Yes, but it's not the same. Yes, and uh, to be natural and tell all my life, 57 years in seven minutes. So, okay, I, I, I go... No, I'm not discussing that, you know, it's just like I feel it. I want you to feel this. I think in Eve, uh, I'm educated, went to school back home in French. That's where I know how to argue. I can speak French. And then, now, English is my second language, foreign language. Then I have to express it in English. Am I missing anything? I don't know. You judge. Now, things will happen around you that will give you meaning or give meaning to your life. Like, um, I lost my job in 2011 here, and I experienced lack and poverty. But I'm glad it happened, because today I'm thinking, I know the American economic system applied to family, and I'm working on myself. Uh, very soon, I'm going to become a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so help me out. Okay. Now, things will happen. Two times back home, I drowned in the sea, and fishermen picked me. I was almost gone. That's why I know that God has a purpose for my life. And I say, it was not fishermen, it was God. One of my cousins didn't make it. He drowned, we didn't see it. Things will happen in your life around you, and people around you will give meaning to your life. My children, I have five of them. These last five years, I celebrated three marriages. I was born in a, a family, 13 to my father from four different wives. You know, he was a polygamous. Women say amen. <laughs> four wives. He handled it then. So family give me meaning. Community, you are wonderful. In Africa, we say rainbow people. You are wonderful. I want to get into your community to be accepted and to exchange. Uh, am I afraid of death? Uh, Peter, don't ask that question to an African. We don't want to talk, talk about our own death. That's why you don't see many African writing will. When you get there, it's like you're going to die. Uh, we don't really like that. I'm not really to die, but I know I will go one day. But what gives me hope is my relationship with Jesus. I receive it by faith. And he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions, and I'm going to go prepare a place for you there. If you receive that by faith, you won't fear death. What would I say to myself? 21. Difficult. I was so proud of myself. My father was learned, very wise man. Even then, he, he could speak the same like me, three languages, fluent in English. And he knew things like uh, the height the great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but while their companions were asleep. They worked hard upward through the night. The other thing he used to say, say, there's uh, 
evil thought projected to a pure mind automatically rebounds to the sender and act like a bullet. And he taught us the golden rule. Don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. And you reap what you sow. And I'm going to end it in this story. You reap what you sow. The golden rule, I learned it here the hard way. When I lost my job, I went and tried yellow cab. Okay, because I wanted something flexible. I didn't like it, but this one experience taught me the golden rule the best way possible. Uh, 2 a.m. in the morning. Downtown was closing, and I got my last passengers, two guys, flagged me down. They, went to, they were going to somewhere on Bel Air Road. And then we got there to cut a story short. They opened the door at the back and they fled away. $27, I lost it. And it was in the hood, and I couldn't maneuver. I was afraid. The door, back door were open. And then I drove a few, you know, uh, half a mile before I stop, and then I close the door. But on my way back, I thought about it. 40 years back home, I did the same. <laughs> I did the same to cab drivers. So when I tell you that, don't pity me. I learned it the hard way. Children, learn the golden rule. Don't do to others. And you reap what you sow. Thank you. Thank you.